believe in a smarter kind of American leadership. We lead best when we combine military power with strong diplomacy, when we leverage our power with coalition building, when we don't let our fears blind us to the opportunities that this new century presents. That's exactly what we're doing right now. And around the globe, it is making a difference. <laughs> The guy's standing there, and as he's saying this, and by the way, he specifically called out Putin that he's bringing him to his knees. Putin's marching into to Ukraine. I mean, this is a, it, would, it was a bad comedy show, let alone a State of the Union. Joining us now, Jonathan Gilliam, former Navy SEAL and FBI agent and president of United States Continued Service. Welcome back, as always, sir. Always good to be here. I, and, I, and this is a, an aspect of the, of the State of the Union that I had not concentrated on that much, but he also talked about... You know, anything that, he, that, that that is not smarter foreign policy, which involves right. us really not getting involved, it was arrogant, it was uh, uh, brash, it was out of fear. In other words, all the wars, all the uh, standing up for ourselves, all the concern after 9-11, he wouldn't have done it that way. He would have done it this way. And boy, is it working. You know, I had a printed version of his speech, and I was going through it uh, as he was talking, and it literally was like I was uh, reading the script of a comedy sketch, and that is a good example right there. Yeah. Diplomacy without force is empty diplomacy. You know without, that, and without the threat of, of, of using force, you can't. Well, that's yeah. You know that's why the eagle. Most people don't know in the great symbol of the United States, the eagle, and they they just changed this. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly when, but it used to be that the eagle was looking. Um, at the arrows, but now he looks at the uh, olive branch um, and he has the arrows in reserve. That means you have force to back up diplomacy. But we've shown time and time again, if you have bad foreign policy, that force is not there. And, it, and as Putin showed, um, he's going to ignore whatever line that you draw. I mean, whether and, and, and when you look if you went to sleep when Obama took office and you look at the Middle East, uh, I mean, it, even Russia and all that, but look, let's look at the Middle East. It looks nothing like what it looked like when Obama took over. Right. Who's in charge everywhere? All the bad guys, Al Qaeda. We're backing Al Qaeda. We're fighting alongside. Al how, and, and you would ask yourself, how is this possible when what happened on 9 11 is still so fresh and was even fresher when he started this policy? How could we now be fighting alongside and supporting Al Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood? Right. Well, I think he said it best in the one part of his speech where he said, I'm no longer running. You know, so he can do this or that. Well, the fact is, he's been running for office for the past six years. And that's what his administration does really well. Yeah. They, they campaign really well. But when it comes to leading, they don't know how to lead. And it's trickled through the DOD. And um, we, we just don't have any dog in the fight when it comes to this stuff. And, th and now things are splintering. These groups are getting stronger. And I think you're going to see, over the next couple of years, you're going to start to see these things grow bigger and bigger. Yeah, well, uh, you know, and Hillary Clinton's going to have a lot to answer for because it was her foreign policy as well uh, for the first uh, four years under Obama. Let's talk about uh, American Sniper. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to see it this weekend. I plan to. I've not seen it. But the left, uh, you know, to me it shows, yesterday we had Marsha Blackburn on, is that she said the reason they're attacking Joni Ernst after her speech is because the, the left is afraid of conservative women. I think the left is afraid of the, the movie American Sniper and the, uh, the record-setting success and acceptance that it has showed uh, at the box office. Well, I didn't really like Joni Ernst's speech either. I thought both sides had no solutions to their, their speeches. But I think when you're absolutely right. When it comes to American Sniper, it's done a couple of things. For one, it has shown again that all of Hollywood does not necessarily have these views, but there are a few in Hollywood who have the loudest mouth, and normally they're not the well-thought-out people. They're just people who just want to spout off. You mean and I, Rosie and uh, Michael Moore, not well thought out? You know, n Whoopi Goldberg. Seth I have to give Whoopi she Goldberg did come credit. She to the defense, you know, yes. I don't agree with everything she yeah. says yeah. all the time, yeah. but she thought this out and she had a very well thought out response to this. Yeah, yeah. Seth but, Rogen's just high all the time and he admits it. Yeah, so well, why would you listen to that's him? That's a whole other story. Yeah, but uh, so, so talk about the, you know, the, the, the role of a sniper. I mean, you know, and, and answer sure. Michael Moore's accusation. Not that I find any credibility in it, but in the minute we have left. Sure. A sniper's job is overwatch and protection of the forces. And it's also to, there to eliminate the threats that we don't see. But what the movie missed, and I think that Michael Moore needs to, well, he'll never realize this, but other people besides Michael Moore need to realize, is that, you know, a sniper is there, a SEAL sniper, or any sniper, they're, they're doing a professional job just like a police officer or a firefighter. When they do their job, 
it's not like they're looking at who they're uh, taking out and getting caught up in the moment. They're looking at the threat. They're eliminating the threat. Right. There will always be wars. There will always be movies about wars. Yeah. And if we don't go out and, and confront these bad people, um, they will come to us eventually. It's the way it's always been Absolutely. throughout history. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Jonathan, always Thank great you very to see much. you, sir. Jonathan Gilliam, ladies and gentlemen. I like the look with the suit and the no tie. And the hair. And the hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, we're going to be uh, coming back, and uh, we're going to be joined by a columnist and contributing editor for TheRoot.com, David Swerdlick. We're going to get his take on the uh, overwhelming reports about Ferguson. Don't go away. <laughs>